Warming up is a commonplace strategy in basically every sport, and warming up can have its performance benefits. Does it really reduce the risk of injury? Welcome back. Dr. Milo Wolf here today, PhD in sports science, breaking down the science around warming up. I feel like once I've warmed up, I'm a lot stronger and I'm ready to lift weights. If, for example, you told me, all right, doc, go ahead and squat a really heavy load right now. As of the making of this video, barbell appears, I squat. That thought makes me a little bit nervous. It makes me a little bit anxious. But to be honest, how I feel about it and whether or not it's actually dangerous is not the same thing. Plenty of things make me feel uneasy or scared or what have you but that doesn't mean they're actually dangerous. As an example, flying makes a lot of people nervous. They think it's dangerous. And if you experience turbulence while flying, for example, you might think, shit, I'm about to die. When in reality, most turbulence is pretty harmless and flying is one of the safest ways of traveling from point A to point B. So clearly there can be a disconnect between what feels scary and dangerous and what is scary and dangerous. So while I might not feel comfortable jumping into heavy squats right away, for example, does that mean that by not warming up sufficiently, I'm increasing injury risk? I'll be laying my cards on the table here. I am not an injury expert. Instead, I approach this with, let's read the evidence and see what it says, and then relay my findings to you. Basically, I wanted to read the science on what evidence is there for warming up preventing injuries. And that's where things got dicey. I'll be organizing my research by publication date to hopefully give you an idea of how things developed over the past couple decades chronologically. One of the earlier systematic reviews I was able to find, a systematic review is essentially performed when sufficient evidence is around to assess that body of evidence, was in 2006 by Fratkin and colleagues. The title of the systematic review was, Does Warming Up Prevent Injury in Sport? Question mark? The evidence from randomized controlled trials, question mark? Now, that doesn't sound too promising, does it? And to make a long story short, they were only able to find five studies that were somewhat controlled, somewhat randomized. These studies took place in American football athletes, runners, military recruits, and handball athletes. Out of these five studies, three found a significant reduction in injury risk from warming up, whereas two others found no benefit. The study in running athletes and in male military recruits found no benefit of warming up for injury risk. The caveat there is that one of these studies had a really low adherence rate, and that's a thing we'll come back to throughout this video. People tend to not really stick with extensive warm-up routines. In this study, over 50% of participants were non-compliant with warming up. And so let me give you the conclusions of this paper. The weight of the evidence is in favor of warming up, but there is insufficient evidence. And it is possible that warming up may be a useful injury prevention tool for some sporting activities and not others. So at least in the early years, around 2006, the evidence was in its infancy. And one thing you'll notice is that basically none of these studies have anything to do with lifting. And that's a common trend in all of this. A few years later, we had a systematic review on the effects of static stretching before exercising and its impact on the risk of injury. They found seven randomized controlled trials and controlled clinical trials that met the inclusion criteria in total. Broadly speaking, across these seven studies, static stretching before before a workout failed to reduce injury risk. But there's a bit of context to be had. There was the potential, based on certain studies' findings, for static stretching to not reduce overall injury risk, but specifically, potentially, reduce musculotendinous injury risk. This is the sort of injury that typically occurs at relatively long muscle lengths. Some preliminary evidence to suggest a relationship between static stretching and the prevention of musculotendinous and ligament sprain type injuries even if not of all injuries. This may be due to static stretching, improving the flexibility of ligaments and musculotendinous units by facilitating connective tissue plastic elongation, thereby promoting muscle relaxation and therefore further stretch and range of motion around the joint, which is believed to help reduce injury risk. Importantly, as we'll briefly touch on in future papers, the effect of becoming more flexible on injury risk is not super clear yet based on the evidence. But at the very least, static stretching doesn't seem to reduce overall injury risk, so it's not something I would recommend before a session, though it may have a benefit for reducing musculotendinous injury risk. But in the case of lifters, it is probably not something I'd recommend, and we'll come to that later. Next up, included just because I found it amusing, was a systematic review titled A Systematic Review on the Effects of Upper Body Warm-Up on Performance and Injury. Now the authors thought, hmm, let me go ahead and do a systematic search of the data on upper body warm-ups and how those relate to injury. 
And it turns out they didn't find a single study. To me, that just highlights that when anyone makes a strong claim around warming up, preventing injury or not preventing injury, just realize that they're going off remarkably little evidence. And it's even worse when you start talking about specifically upper body or lower body warm ups or specific modalities. Oftentimes, there's not a ton of evidence there. So because we don't have a ton of evidence, I thought, hmm, okay, let me look for any meta analysis that compared different modes of exercising and how that reduces injury risk in athletes more broadly. One meta-analysis by Larson and colleagues found the following. They compared the effects of different modalities in different populations and found this. In a list of different modalities, they found that strength training, aka lifting weights in the gym, for example, reduced injury risk the most. The other modalities that had a meaningful effect were proprioception training and studies that used an intervention with multiple different modalities. For example, strength training plus stretching plus other stuff. Stretching, on the other hand, once again showed little to no effect on overall injury risk. So it's consistent across different meta-analyses that static stretching doesn't seem to prevent injury. So if static stretching, whether done as part of your warm-up or not, doesn't seem to reduce risk of injury, what does seem to reduce injury risk? Well, for one, as I just mentioned, strength training and potentially proprioception training. One interesting finding from Al Satter and colleagues from 2020 in a systematic review of the effect of plyometric exercises on ACL injury risk was that plyometric exercises did seem to be effective in reducing the risk of developing injuries with your ACL or anterior cruciate ligament. But once again, that didn't need to be performed as part of your warm-up, just in your routine at some point. And it's unclear whether this would be a different effect from just resistance training or not. And that brings me to the most recent paper I was able to find on the effect of warming up on injury risk and what you should be doing as part of your warm-up to prevent injuries, whether you should even be doing anything. Here's the paper. It's a narrative review from 2023 by David Ben. We know that static stretching doesn't seem to reduce injury risk meaningfully overall, but what about dynamic stretching? For example, doing arm swings before you head into your upper body session. Well, only two randomized controlled trials have examined the impact of dynamic stretching on injury risk thus far. So even with this new modality, there is not a lot of evidence out there. But with that in mind, and with this being the most recent review paper on the topic, let me give you a few of the takeaways made in this really extensive narrative review on the state of the evidence on warming up. This research tends to suggest that dynamic warm activities that may not necessarily emphasize movement to the the endpoints of the range of motion can still contribute to a reduced injury incidence. Another thing that authors noted on was that the FIFA 11 plus warm-up routine, which is a certain warm-up routine that involves a lot of different components and a lot of different exercises, including some static stretching, some eccentric training like Nordic curls, some resistance training, some explosive movements, some running, has pretty compelling evidence at this point for reducing injury risk when it comes to certain sports like soccer or football if you live in the righteous Europe. And the evidence on FIFA 11 plus as a warm-up routine is some of the most substantive evidence we have. We have quite a few studies on this. The issue is that there's so many things going on that it's really difficult to tell what is going on. It could just be that the strength components of the routine, of the warm-up routine, are what is ultimately preventing injury. As I mentioned earlier, we have quite a bit of evidence on reducing injury rates as a result of strength training being a thing. It could also be that some of the more explosive movements are contributing towards reduced injury risk. But it's really difficult to assess the causality of any single element of the routine when a routine has so many things baked into it. So the best kind of thing we can say is that the strength component and maybe the plyometric component are probably playing a role and that overall the FIFA 11 routine when it comes to soccer players is likely effective at preventing injuries. But when it comes to saying that you should be doing this or that before you walk out, it doesn't really help there. The most frequent elements of a multifaceted training program were a combination of strength, balance, plyometric, and dynamic warm-up slash stretching exercises, which enhanced the effect of an injury prevention program. Within the current literature, there is a conflict regarding the effect of impaired or restricted flexibility on the injury rate. As I mentioned earlier, although some people have hypothesized that static stretching is increasing flexibility and that's a good thing for preventing injuries, it's still a bit unclear. An increased ability of the muscle tendon complex to absorb torques or forces, especially at longer muscle lengths, where most musculotendinous injuries occur, should decrease the susceptibility to musculotendinous injuries. The paradigm shift in the 21st century from static stretching to dynamic stretching may be attributed to dynamic stretching induced improvements in range of motion with either a lack of negative or even positive effects on performance. Whereas only two articles investigated the effects of dynamic stretching, there is extensive evidence showing the positive injury attenuation effects of activity programs incorporating dynamic stretching and dynamic activity. Acute bouts of dynamic stretching may induce thixotropic effects, reduced viscoelasticity, and positively modify the emotional state attenuating muscle tension while the psychological benefits may also increase concentration, attention, 
and better prepare players for games and competition. So dynamic stretching, just warming up in general, getting warm, not necessarily going through a full range of motion even, seems to be beneficial when it comes to performance potentially. I can make a whole video on warming up for performance if you'd like, leave a comment down below. It seems to potentially be beneficial for that, but the evidence for it reducing injury risk is still a bit more tenuous with only two studies, randomized controlled studies, looking at this. There is more compelling evidence, not warming up now, just in general at performing strength training, aka lifting, and some eccentric training potentially, and some plyometric training potentially, do reduce injury risk. And across sports like soccer, football, whatever you call it, rugby, American football, doing things like Nordic curls is a pretty widespread practice because it is resistance training at relatively low muscle lengths and it is an eccentric only exercise most of the time, which are things that probably reduce injury risk somewhat. But importantly, none of this needs to be done as part of your warm up, which then calls into question, do we need to warm up? Before I get into the takeaways for this video, I want to briefly mention that just to make sure I wasn't just completely misreading the evidence, I had a friend of mine, Dr. Jacob Templar, doctor in physical therapy, read over the whole script, make sure that I was appropriately conveying the information and not just speaking outside of my wheelhouse. And the information here is at least vetted by him and to my knowledge is the best information that is out there in the evidence. If you need advice from a physical therapist, I would recommend checking him out. He is one of the most evidence-based physical therapists I know. And broadly speaking, his opinions that he's posted about on Instagram, for example, reflect what I just said. So with all of that in mind, let me give you some takeaways. First, one huge limitation of the existing evidence is that there is none basically, in regards to warming up for preventing injuries from lifting weights. So everything I'm about to say is highly speculative, highly inferential, just keep that in mind. And all the following takeaways are based on evidence in sports with a higher injury rates typically than what you observe in lifting. First, getting warmed up somehow before lifting weights is probably a good idea. Just generally for performance, there might be a benefit, at least for more strength-based things. Whereas for hypertrophy training, it's a bit less clear. I can make a whole video on that, leave a comment down below. But for injury risk, it's not really that clear that it's meaningfully reducing your injury risk. Specifically, dynamic warm-ups have two studies on them, and static stretching doesn't seem to reduce injury risk when performed at any point, whether as part of a warm-up or not. And the evidence we do have finding a reduced injury risk is typically on multi-modality interventions like the FIFA 11, where there's so much stuff going on that we can't really tell what's causing an effect. And importantly, the second takeaway is that lifting weights or strength training and eccentric training and potentially plyometric training seem to potentially reduce injury risk. But if you're lifting weights in the gym, you're likely already getting that effect. And I'm not sure that including some of that in your warm up is going to further reduce injury risk. I would probably just recommend doing the actual lift. So for example, if you're warming up to bench press for sets of 10, I would start with the bar and then gradually move up. But even then at this stage, I can't confidently say that there's going to be a meaningful reduction in your injury risk. The evidence just isn't there. The best warm up is likely the one you stick to. One that gets you prepared for what you're doing, one that increases your body temperature and muscle temperature and generally primes you for performance. But importantly, it needs to be one you can stick to. And in these studies, you often observe very low compliance rates because many warm up protocols are so long that they are difficult to stick to. So be a minimalist about your warm up whenever possible so that you can actually consistently do it. Lifting weights or strength training likely reduces injury risk when it comes to other activities like playing sports and what have you. Some eccentric training potentially even at lower muscle lengths might be beneficial, not necessarily as part of your warm-up though. You can do it anytime. Likewise, some plyometric training might be beneficial for reducing injury risk. Not sure if it's necessary alongside lifting or not, but it may or may not be beneficial. Once again, probably not necessary to do it as part of your warm-up. And finally, static stretching doesn't seem to really reduce injury risk overall. So when you combine that with the fact that there's some evidence showing a decrease in force production when static stretching is held for too long before a workout, it's probably not something you should do before training or maybe even in general when it comes to you being a lifter. That's the video, broke down the evidence, you probably should do some warming up, but I wouldn't worry about injury risk too much if you have to minimize your warm-up time or what have you. Pretty much all the evidence we have is from other fields and not very well controlled. And it's a mess, quite frankly. The good news is, if you're lifting, you're likely reducing injury risk from other activities. So, well done you. If you like the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. If you'd like to see me cover anything else, like potentially the effects of warming up on performance and how to warm up to maximize performance and progress within the gym, leave a comment down below and I'll get to it. If you'd like me to coach you, consider checking out the link above and we could enter a coaching relationship. In the meantime, have a fantastic day and I'll see you guys, my subscribers, next time. Peace.